What's up, YouTube? We back at Got It. Man, nah, we nah, back. Nah, 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 nah. I gotta at, come with something different. I gotta at, come at. with something different. I gotta come with something different. What's happening? One time squad. You feel me? We back at Got It. Again with another banger. I told y'all I was gonna drop another one. Whenever I drop it is whenever I drop it. You feel me? Another one. Another one. Bitch. <laughs> nah, nigga. We got this uh this other banger for real, man. I wanted to do a, a true crime one because for all the people out there that like uh true crime shit, mm -hmm, like like me. Like me. Like me. Like me. Like me. Hold on. Like me. Look, nigga, I love to grind shit, you feel me? But look, we got this never ending nightmare. The murder of Alice. Gross. You feel me? Uh, I don't know nothing about this case, but I'm dying to get up into this case for real. Uh, yeah, Ellis Gross. Yeah. So this was this was this was published December 12th, 2020, two years ago. But uh, we gonna get we gonna get into this one. Cause I know for a fact this one's gonna be good. Ain't no uh skipping and nah, we gon we gonna get the full details to the full story. So get ready to have y'all heads turn. Get ready to have y'all jaws drop. Y'all jaw jaw. Jaws. Not draws. Jaws. Yeah, jaws, jaws, jaws. Yeah, get ready to have y'all jaws drop. You um, said you said draws jopped. <laughs> Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> you said get ready to have your draws jopped. <laughs> said that shit back. Oh God. But no, uh, stuff like this is crazy because they all they always have you, they always have your last moments on either camera or picture. And it's wild to me. It's like, it's hella like sketch, but. Man, we gonna get up into this for real. Viewer discretion is advised. That one nigga. You over the last two weeks. Of Viewer being discretion being is advised. <laughs> There's not a moment of the day that Number you one. don't think about Alice. Alice's Alice mother. Is <laughs> It's almost impossible to describe what that pain feels like, but we just want her to know, please, Alice, if you're out there, come home. Don't and you think she would If be anyone has no any information way. at all about her movements on that day <laughs> or about her whereabouts now, so I'm just really funny video. plead with them to come forward to the police and get her home because that's where she belongs and she needs to be here with us. They took her ass. You talking about something? <laughs> <laughs> she talking about if you after, please come home. Nigga, they took her. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, shit. Truly criminal. You should look like a video game uh, title screen. Mm -hmm. Poppy Madeline Gross was born on Valentine's Day 2000 in London, England. She lived in Hanwell with her sister Nina and parents Rosalind and Jose. She was incredibly creative and had a keen eye for art and design. She loved music and singing, could play the piano and violin, and would often write and perform her own songs. <laughs> on the 28th of August 2014, at around 3pm, she left her house to go for one of her usual walks down by the river. She told her parents she would be back by six. She regularly did this and always kept to her time. 
Later in the day, she texted her father to say she was on her way home and wouldn't be long. Alice was so vigilant with her timekeeping that a 7pm came round and she still wasn't home despite sending the text message. Her parents knew instinctively that something was deeply wrong. Her phone wasn't ringing anymore and this only heightened her parents' concerns. Alice was only 14 and had been diagnosed with anorexia and depression. And although she and her family were seeking treatment, her parents were terrified that maybe she had collapsed somewhere. They reported her missing straight away. Between the police and Alice's family and friends, they began to search the area where they knew she would have been walking, but found nothing. Detective Superintendent Carl Meta was assigned to the case and was immediately concerned. The investigation was moving fast and quickly reached the media, and before long... You hear that? He was immediately concerned, but the U.S. The U.S. Police Department be like, oh no, you gotta wait. You gotta wait a certain amount of time before you can uh, do a missing person report. Nigga, they gonna be long gone by then. Mm -hmm. If a person is missing, you should just hop on You gotta do that, that shit yourself. We calling the whole hood, nigga. <laughs> we calling the whole hood, nigga. Nigga, when my brother, when my brother was uh, missing for a little bit, yeah, that nigga ran away. <laughs> missing for, yeah, we found him. Called the whole hood, nigga. Oh, me. Witnesses were coming forward to report individual sightings of her. Using this information, the police were able to track down the relevant CCTV footage which confirmed these sightings. Just before 4pm, she was picked up on camera walking along the Grand Union right, Canal, man. then at a location called the Brentford Lock, not far from where she lived. Where was she going? Out of the river? She was spotted again at 4.26 p.m. walking along the canal underbridge called Trumpers Way, heading back in the direction of her home in Hanwell. But after this, there were no more sightings of her. A few days later, and with still no leads, her family made a desperate appeal. We love you, uh, we miss you, uh, we want to know if you're safe, and we want you to come home. Uh, we know that maybe you've been going through some difficult times, um, but you, we want you to know that we're thinking about all the happy times we've had together as a family and the lively and beautiful person that you are. Um, anyone that knows anything um, about Alice's whereabouts, um, we want you know. to um, understand no, that she's a vulnerable uh, young girl. And they either got her and if they could or please contact mm -hmm. the dude that got her know exactly where she's at. Mm -hmm. any information That's probably, they yeah. Would have that might be someone that knew that she had any kind of plan, someone that she's contacted in um, a chat room, for example, or someone that actually knows where she is now. Please, please let us know that she's safe. Realising the case needed more than just a local search, Detective Superintendent Meta turned the case over to Scotland Yard's homicide and major crime squad for it to be escalated. The public quickly mobilised to try and help find her. The hashtag Find Alice was being used all over social media. Voluntary searches were being conducted morning, noon and night, and traditional yellow ribbons were placed all over the town to draw more attention and awareness for the missing girl. On the mm. 4th of September, almost a week after she had last been seen, the police found her backpack along the footpath by the River Brent. In it, it had her belongings, including the shoes she had been wearing. Although there was still no sign of Alice or her phone, this was a massive lead, as they now had an area to work on. The police chose to release the CCTV footage they had previously found to the public. It showed the backpack and shoes clearly, and they appealed for witnesses that may have seen the bag to urgently come forward. As Alice had Where depression, the police also had to consider mm -hmm. the possibility of suicide. With 600 officers from eight different forces, this had now become the largest deployment of Metropolitan Police officers in a search since the London bombings in 2005. I ain't gonna rewind it back, but did y'all hear that? Literally said a suicide, but her shoes and stuff was found four years later? Right on that bridge? Bro, hell no, she was taken, and that nigga put that shit right back over there. Mm -hmm. He put that shit right back over there. He got, he got her wearing whatever he want her to wear right now, or right then. I'm telling you. Tell you, people be taking people like that and making them have their kids sometimes. 
Mm -hmm. And her being that young, that skinny, bro, bro, is wild. They were reviewing hundreds of CCTV cameras and a reward of £20,000 was being offered for anyone with information that could help find her. Using divers and sniffer dogs, the police began a mass search operation covering nine square miles of woodland area and almost four miles of water. This was a massive and painstaking task, but with still no sightings or signs of Alice, they had no other options. They searched the murky waters and went through the thick woodlands with a fine tooth comb, but the search turned up nothing. The phone data analysis revealed that when she sent the message to her father saying she was heading home, she was right by the River Brent. Detective Superintendent Meta ordered another search of the area, believing there was more to find there. As the days continued to pass, the possibility of suicide was becoming less and less likely. Forensic scientists recognised uh, that when a body first goes into the water, it yeah. will sink. As the body begins to decompose, bacteria will form which creates gases in the body, forcing the body to rise back up to the surface. If she had taken her own life through drowning, she would have been discovered by now. So if she was in the water, it was possible she was being held down by something. They ran a search on the missing persons database for the area and were interested to find that a 41-year-old Arnis Solkams, originally from Latvia, had also been reported missing. He had been living in Ealing for around seven years working as a builder and when he failed to return home from work, his partner contacted the police. Continuing to review the CCTV footage, they saw a middle-aged man on a bike pedalling behind Alice over the bridge just a few minutes behind her. He surely would have passed her at some point. He was trying to get her number and got shot down. He was spotted again on another camera crossing a busy road and cycling down. Initially, there was nothing untoward, except when the police looked deeper, they realised that the time it had taken for him to cycle from the bridge to the main road had taken almost 45 minutes, when normally it would take just a few. The man on the bike was formally identified as Arnis Solkans. Damn, how y'all identify him? The cameras they had used to track down crazy. Alice began to paint a very sinister picture. The police saw Zolkams on CCTV riding back to the area where Alice had last been seen, twice in 12 hours. He returned at 7.45 and re-emerged from the area at 8.50 on the evening of the 28th. He was now wearing different clothes. Oh, yeah, he he returned one final time just before 7am on the 29th. Further CCTV showed him in a shop buying some beers at around 8 p.m. on the 28th. See how he looked? He did it. For sure he did it. Meta and his team headed for Zolkin's property in Ealing to begin the search. Upon doing a background check, the team's worst fears were realised. Zolkin's had in fact been previously convicted of murder. He had beaten and stabbed his wife to death and buried her in a shallow grave. He served seven years in a Latvian prison for the murder of his wife. In 2009, just two years after arriving in London, he sexually assaulted a 14-year-old girl near the same canal he rode his bike down, just two miles from where Alice had gone missing. At the time, it wasn't Scotland Yard's policy to run the same checks that they do today, so Zolkin's past in Latvia was never brought to their attention. The 14-year-old girl did not make a formal statement, and he was never prosecuted. Four weeks after the search for Alice began, the police did a reconstruction of the last route she took, with an actress wearing an identical outfit in the hope more people would remember seeing her. No piece of evidence was too small, and the police needed every lead That's they could the get. Detective Meta and his team knew they were now looking for a man behind Alice's disappearance and likely murder. But Zolkins was nowhere to be found, and the police were panicking that he may have left the country. September 30th, five weeks after Alice had last been seen, a devastating and gruesome discovery was made. Good morning, I am Commander Graham McNulty from the Specialist Crime and Operations Directorate in the Metropolitan Police. Last night, the 30th of September, a search was carried out at the River Brent as part of our ongoing investigation into the disappearance of Alice Gross. Following this search, we have sadly recovered a body from the water. 
Just a day later, they officially confirmed they had recovered the body of Alice Gross. She was naked apart from a single sock, tied up in a fetal position and wrapped in bin bags. She had been weighed down by bricks and logs and tied to a bicycle wheel. Further analysis showed that she had died of asphyxiation. A cigarette butt was found at the crime scene, which had Zolkin's DNA on it. DNA of his was also found on Alice's shoes inside her backpack. During their search of his property in the first underneath place. his patio, they discovered the back of Alice's iPhone 4S. Yeah. Four days after Alice's body was discovered, the police finally found Arnest Zolkans. He had committed suicide by hanging himself in a secluded woody area of Boston Damn. Manor Park in Hounslow. Catch body, man. Kill yourself. The police speculated he'd seen Alice shit. while riding his bike and attempted to, or had managed, to sexually assault her and crush her to death. He then returned several times to try and conceal her body. It was a truly harrowing picture. The police confirmed that if they had found him alive, they would have enough to charge him with the murder of Alice Gross. A huge investigation and search uh, commenced. Uh, and so as a consequence of that, is today we can, uh, we can say that Arnest Salkins was responsible for the murder of... Uh, he knew. Him? No, no, not him. The the dude that killed himself. He knew that they was getting close. And they was coming for him too. He knew. Mm -hmm. That's and he was gonna serve <laughs> life up in jail. Guaranteed. Especially because that ain't his that ain't his first offense. And he's already did shit like that before. He he literally killed his wife. And he was still out. <sighs> Hell no. Why the fuck they let him out? No, you did your time. You're not going to do it again. Slap on the wrist. And he did it again. Uh, Alice Ross. On the 23rd of October 2014, Alice was laid to rest and her family and the community could finally begin to grieve. Her family fought tirelessly for the policies and procedures regarding background checks to be reviewed. Procedures for running background checks on people entering the UK have now been changed. The number of staff employed by the Criminal Records Office has grown and requests for criminal records increased so that 80% of foreign suspects are now being thoroughly checked. Alice Gross was a talented, vibrant and creative young girl. Her life was cut terribly short, but her amazing energy and passion for life will always be remembered. That's wild. That is that's wild. Yeah, that's crazy. Bro. That's why. Yeah. One, yeah. Once my daughter's old enough, I don't give a damn. You driving your car at 15. Mm -hmm. 15, you driving. Wherever you need to go. Or I'm going to drive you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drive you. I'm going to pick you up. I don't give a damn who you with. As long as you safe. Shit. Hey, that's wild, man. Keep keep your loved ones close to keep them safe. <sighs> there be some crazy people. I and, and the fact he he already they at the beginning. I can't even speak, bro. Cause this this is crazy. At the beginning, they said that was her routine. While he 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 been had that planned out. Mm -hmm. He probably yeah, for sure. That was her routine walk. He had that planned out. Mm -hmm. That nigga said, I'm going to catch on to this little routine. Slide mm -hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he was probably riding his bike every single day catching people on routines. And she was the only person probably that was stuck on her routine. That's crazy. Yeah, nah. Mm -hmm. Break. Mm-mm. And -mm. routines. Hell but look, I okay. never know who's playing. Always gotta be aware. Mm -hmm. Man, but look, we're gonna catch up with y'all on the next one. I really hope y'all enjoyed. So give me that like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that bell. You feel me? We be dropping bangers, bangers. Yes, sir. 
But nah, we gon' uh, we gonna get up with y'all next time. Two. <laughs>